are talking about a contagious spirit something that can haunt you in your sleep it can it can haunt you in the bus it can it can provoke something on the inside and he prophesied for morning until he We, 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 we want to ask God bring those days back again bring those days back again wherein men will drink the wine that is wine indeed hallelujah for every situation that you see there is an answer to that situation in a sacrifice let us pray. Father, tonight we come before you. We ask that you inspire us and cause the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. There is an answer. Priesthood is a broad concept. It's a broad concept that holds the key to numerous possibilities in the grace of God. There are things to do to deliver a family consistent with the kind of bondage that holds the family down. There are things to do to deliver a nation. We have a few prescriptions in the scriptures. For instance, the Bible says that as soon as Zion travails, she brought forth her children. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 50. As we prosper in this research. The idea is to equip you so that you can become effective in your responsibility. To turn the hand of the, of, of the clock. To change the tide. To establish the will of God. In Isaiah chapter 50, there is a summon here. In verse number 5. There is a summon. Isaiah, sorry, Psalms 50 verse 5. There is a summon in the scripture, he said, Gather my sins together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. These ones have covenanted to perpetually be bringing sacrifices unto me. So when there are emergencies, this kind of summon takes place because it's those people that can afford God the opportunity, afford Him the opportunity of access. In order for him to establish his will. He said, gather them. Don't gather everybody. My people that have what it takes to administer change as such that I need to meet with right now. They are critical kingdom issues that um, I would like to place before them. Uh, the type of saints I'm talking about are those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Second scripture. Second Kings chapter 3. Second Kings chapter 3. From verse 24. It's a long reading. But we'll just cut it short and try to explain the context so that you can follow in the progression. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 24. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward smiting the Moabites even in their country. And they beat down the cities and on every good piece of land cast every man his stone and filled it. And they stopped. And all the wells of water, all the wells of water, and fell 
all the good trees only in Kehaset left. Left there the stones thereof, how be it, the slingers went about it and smote it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him 700 men that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall, and there was great indignation against Israel and they departed from him and returned to their own land. The battle was already decided. Victory was already in view. And suddenly, because the king understood the priesthood, he made a sacrifice. And the effect of the sacrifice was that the battle was overturned. There was indignation. I tried so hard today to find out what that word means in that scripture. To have a mental picture of what happened. What was the repercussion of the sacrifice that was offered. I'm still working on it. But that sacrifice turned victory into confusion. So the real people that matter in the day of battle, in the day of trouble, are those that know the way of sacrifice. There is no year that starts for, I've forgotten when I started. It the month of January. I empty myself in terms of financial seed in all directions. Apart from the prayers and the fasting that we do, there are deliberate commitments I make. As we do crossover night, the first person I sow into his account is my father in the law. Then from that 1st of January till the month comes to an end into mid-February, if I see anybody that has a genuine pressing need, genuine pressing need, because... I see fake people trying to take advantage, and I know the voice of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You must understand that the person that is good is not me, it's the Holy Ghost inside. That's a good one. This man is not good, but the one in him is good. And if the Holy Spirit wants to help you through me, he knows how to, I'm yielded, he knows how to, what to do. He knows where to touch, and we know that he's him. Right? So, sacrifice. In fact, in the law of sacrifice, this is the prescription. Ecclesiastes. I follow this prescription. He said, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall come upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Give a portion. You don't even know which seed is going to prosper. Except sacrifice becomes a lifestyle that there are many things in, around your life that will be unreachable. The king turned the face of the battle because he understood sacrifice. Sacrifice can change impossibilities into possibilities. It can, it is the reason for the near miracle syndromes that people experience. It's as if you are about to lay hold of, on, on something and there is a signal in the spirit that hey, he's about to trespass a certain law, a certain limitation that have been set according to the diabolical wisdom that is at work in the family. It's an alarm signal. It goes off the realm of the spirit and the people that are intelligent know the sacrifice to offer and even though it is obvious that you have gotten it it is overturned and I've seen it again and again and again 
and again and again. They took somebody's details, and because I've worked in public service before, they did something like documentation. It means you have already gotten the appointment. He filled the forms. The files were open. And that was the last time he was invited. The only thing that was missing was the employment letter, which was supposed to come two weeks after that time. But they wanted to give him a head start so that the files would be open. And once the letter comes, a copy goes into the file. He had finished documentation. Even went to the hospital, did the medical checks to show that he was medically fit to um, undertake the task, the responsibility of the job. And all of that was put in place. But that was the last he heard. You want to find out why? It's in the scripture. Israel had already won the battle. They had discomfited the enemy. It was obvious that it was only time that was standing between their current state and their current possibilities. And the king manipulated all of that. It crashed. It crumbled. The advantage was lost. It was as if there was no victory at all. Everything was reversed just because there was a sacrifice. So the Bible says, gather unto me such saints among my people, not everybody, that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those are the real people that can change things in families, in terrains, in territories. Those are the changers. Now, as we proceed in this matter of sacrifice, it is essential to understand that before God can receive sacrifice from you, God must first accept your person. And that is the reason why we talked about consecration. The man that is doing the work of priesthood must be accepted first before his transactions can have any effect in the eyes of God. If a man is not accepted, his priesthood cannot be accepted. The Bible saying concerning Cain that God rejected Cain and rejected his sacrifice. And so if I take you to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, where we were identified as a royal priesthood, there are several things that you will find as we prosper in the reading. Are you there? Just to show you a few things before we start to talk about sacrifices. Sacrifices. Samuel was one of those intelligent people that understood the way of sacrifices. He offered a kid, he offered a young ram as a sacrifice in dry season and rain fair. That's why I know that uh, if you know what sacrifice to offer, priesthood work is not something you can do without knowledge. You must be educated to do the kind of things we are talking about. You must be trained to do it. You can do so many things without knowledge, but not priesthood. Because the priest must understand the effect of a certain sacrifice he's offering. He must know what sacrifice to offer under certain circumstances. It, there is so much intelligence in the work of priesthood that you cannot attempt to carry it out with ignorance. My duty tonight is to give us some intelligence. The authority from whence I speak is tied to scripture first and foremost and my own personal experience because I've worked in it for many years. So I can make it public now. Hallelujah. See, because you didn't say amen, we are going to. We'll allow you, we'll allow you labor for a while. When you have labored, you'll come back and You'll be interested. <laughs> have you seen a curse manifesting in your family before and you have desired that it, it changes? I have seen and I have defeated it. Have you noticed patterns? Oh, okay, there is one response to it. You can ignore it and pretend that it's just natural. Remember, faith does not deny the presence of mountains. The kind of faith we do today and teach today. 
fundamentally denies the presence of mountains. Faith is intelligent and it doesn't deny mountains. So don't think you are walking by faith just denying, living in self-denial and thinking that something that is very, very present doesn't exist. Are you with me? Um, amen? Because most, most, most people operate like that. They just say, okay, no, it doesn't exist. And then you hear people saying stuff like, um, Jesus said it is finished. So why are we still looking for demons? Um, I think what I need to ask is, Jesus paid for your sickness? Is that not true? Do you still fall sick? You don't fall sick anymore. Since you gave your life to Christ, you've been like a stone, a rolling stone. I think we need to understand redemption. We need to understand um, the potential that is in the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is on the ground of what he did that what we are going to do according to faith becomes effective. The priesthood of Jesus is not a substitute for your own priesthood. Right now in the heavenlies, Jesus is involved in priesthood. In fact, the priesthood of Jesus currently is on three scopes, on three levels. The reason why you continue being a Christian, you slept yesterday, woke up, still a Christian, is because Jesus is doing some priesthood that is sustaining you in the line of possibilities secured by your faith. Without the priesthood of Jesus, your own priesthood becomes irrelevant. Now, so, let it be known that um, Jesus' priesthood is not a substitution for your own priesthood. If you decide to be unproductive, the tributaries and the gates that your life should open will remain closed and Satan will dominate even though you are present. Every believer has a responsibility, has a jurisdiction, has an allotment, has a destiny, has an allocation, has a territory. And you will do well to understand stewardship. God will not do for you what he placed you to do in the kingdom of God that is supposed to bring about changes in the environment where you are domiciled. So I believe that the time has come for us to understand these matters and to understand them thoroughly. Okay, let us start the journey. These sacrifices that have the capacity to move the hand of God and to commit God, to give God an opportunity to establish his heart desire. Right? We want to look into it now. We will use some scriptures so that you will follow and then we'll build from that point. First example is in Acts chapter 10 where I read about Cornelius. There were two things Cornelius did that was responsible for the angelic visitation that came to him. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. An unbeliever. He gave much alms. There was sacrifice. You could see it. He was, he was a very supportive person. He couldn't see someone that was less privileged that was under pressure, that he would not do something within his power to alleviate his situation. That was the kind of man he was. Then his gestures of mercy, gestures of kindness, began to accumulate value in the realm of the spirit. And on the strength of the accumulation, an angel was sent to him. It was through the 
words of the angel that was sent to him that we now gained perspective of the implication of his actions. First perspective, he said, thy prayers and thy arms have ascended unto God as a memorial. Thank God for this feedback because without this feedback, we'll never know that his actions had implications in the other realm. So that is to say, one of the things that has implications and capacity of influencing heaven to move in a certain direction is prayer. But remember, remember, when we talk sacrifice, everything in, under that broad heading must carry the texture of sacrifice. There are some prayers you can pray that is not sacrifice. There are some things you can do that is convenient. That doesn't number among sacrifices. Hallelujah. In the month of January, we train you to give, make a sacrifice. That is supposed to be an ordinary level requirement. Because my own sacrificial life doesn't end in January. I have the record of how much I contributed to this building. If I'm not mistaken, no human being alive gave to this building more than myself. My giving is about 10% of what was used to build this place. May the Lord give you understanding. So when somebody now rises up and he wants to use the sacrifice of a ram to attack me, how much is a ram? He bought a ram. And then he has extracted the blood of a ram. He uses it to do something. And the intention is to attack me. That is altar is too small for us to notice the effect of what he did. Don't forget, the texture of sacrifice must be on all the items that we are listing here. So, one is prayer. I'll give you a case study. And we need to ask ourselves a question, at what point is prayer a sacrifice? Are you with me? You want to move the hand of God? Stay with me. I will show you how it works. Go to the book of Acts. So one of the instruments you can use for your altar is called prayer. Because prayer has the potential. It was prayer and arms the man gave and it ascended to God as a memorial. I can show you several scriptures where prayer the form in which prayer exists in the tabernacle of God. So prayer can leave this realm and it can go into that realm and influence something in that realm that will impact upon this realm. So prayer is one of the utensils that we need in our priesthood. And the reason why our priesthood is set up is so that we can offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God through Jesus Christ. Those spiritual sacrifices can have terrible far-reaching effects. The offering I give cannot enter the baskets. These baskets, you know, when we are, they are taking it around, this is what we use. We use these baskets. My own can't enter. And it's not during services like this that I give offering. When there's a need in this ministry, first of all, I will attempt meeting it with my own means. It is when it is not possible for me to meet it with my means that we can now fall back on the ministry account. And I've been doing this for 14 years. <laughs> you know, when I was telling you yesterday that if Satan comes now and they... they the agenda of Satan is to attack, make my son an unbeliever. He came late. I will tell you why I'm sure of that. 
It's not everything that Satan can do. When you become serious with your life of priesthood, you are exempted on various fronts. Acts chapter 12. Now, about the time, about the time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex setting of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw he pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And then were the days of unliving bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. When is prayer a sacrifice? Number one, when it is made without ceasing. Because that's not how you normally pray. Like when we came here now, we have two hours of prayers before the teaching. That's how we normally pray. Are you with me? Meanwhile, this our own normal prayer is in another place. This is the kind of prayer that they pray once a year and say they pray it. And that's why altars are of different levels of stature. That altar is, is still an altar, but it has a level of possibilities that can be achieved through that altar in the spirit. Evangelist Uka said something. He is a field man, so he has experience of demons and all that stuff. If we leave this panel place and go out, which we are going to do, you will discover that you don't need to go too far to meet people that are dealing with devils. We'll do that in the neighborhood. Go out. We'll just do a prayer. After a long prayer, we'll go out for, to pray for mad people. For you, your hands will do wonders. Because we are going to be drawing from the value that has been accumulated in the spirit. Don't forget, before we go into this aspect of things that consist our priesthood, note first of all that you must be accepted in the eyes of God first. Right? This acceptance is not salvation, no. It's not you being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This acceptance I'm talking about begins with consecration. It begins, it continues with a deliberate commitment to holy living. So when those fundamentals are in place, then you can offer up spiritual sacrifices that can move the hand of God. So normally before we start any meeting, we pray for two hours. So we'll begin by four, we'll pray to six before we come into the word of God. And most of the people that leave the prayers here, they, they pray. A lot of praying goes on to prepare their spirit to come and do ministry. Do you understand that? So it means that on the average, there is a, there is a ranking, a rating for a corporate priesthood in this place, consistent with what we are willing to bring to the table when we are praying. But even though we pray two hours before we start meetings here, when we really want to get serious, the strategy is to pray without ceasing. You want to see God's hand? Go for 24 hours of prayer. You want to see God's hand? Go for 12 hours of prayer. I remember there was a, a crusade we wanted to hold, Festival of Glory, and everything shut down. That was the first time. The, a day, two days to the crusade, Federal Airport Authority declared a strike. That means no airplane is allowed to fly into the country. Some of my friends were already airborne from other nations. Then we went to IBB Square. It was 24 hours of prayer. Huh? Was it 24 hours? 24 hours of prayer. Started 6 a.m., ended 6 a.m. 
akola kure masula. I have seen that it doesn't matter whether it is it came from government house or from presidential villa. That decision that you are contesting in long prayers. It will change. It is in that kind of operation that you will discover that man is a puppet. Human beings. The same person that told you, you will never go. When you go and engage long prayers, you will be the one to say, your journey has been. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen that many times. You want to see, he said prayer was made without ceasing of the church. I finished youth service, I left Kano. Went back to Kogi State. Went to meet with my family. And my disciples in Kano decided that they were going on a fast that doesn't have an, a terminal date. And the object of the fast was that they were fasting and praying consistently until God brings me back. And they, they refused to stop. Right? So that was what was happening in Acts 1, scene 1. Some people gathered together and said, that copper. Because when I got there, I started praying on one mountain. And people started gathering. So I started teaching. And the number started increasing. And that's how a movement be began in Kano. So when I finished my youth service, I, I took my bag, I left, went back home. The guys there said, we are sure that the training God sent this man to give us has not finished. So they took a fast and said, God, oh, if you want us to stop fasting, bring the man back. But we will not stop. Meanwhile, I had my plans. I wanted to roll out my plans and all of that. And, uh, but I said I should pray. On the 13th of January of the next year after my fast, after my NYSC, we, we, we did two hours prayer at home. And then we went to the church because it was a fasting season. That was the first day of the fasting season. We did two hours prayer again in the church. And I felt it was not enough. So we went to my friend's house. We did three hours of prayer. And when we finished three hours of prayer, the electricity provider took electricity. So my friend saw through the window that uh, there were some houses that had electricity. So he went to the garage to change the face so that we could have electricity. The moment he left me in the living room and went to the garage, the angel of the Lord came through the wall. He said, go back to Kano. Continue your work of discipleship on the people that the Lord has gathered unto you. When you have finished, I will give you a job. And you will invest in many destinies and a great network will be formed. He was reading from a scroll. All the questions I asked the angel I never answered. That's when I discovered that angels are messengers. It's not as if they are wise. The angel read the scroll and vanished three seconds before my friend came out of the garage. He said, let's continue prayer. I said, my own prayer has finished. <laughs> when I went to Kanu and I saw the fasting company, then I knew that these were the people that put me in trouble. They held on to God and they enforced his hand. And prayers were made without ceasing of the church. Oh, oh, those of you, maybe because I'm seeing Pastor George, pastors in the north where there is hostility to Christianity, don't worry. Let us start the prayer. Me, standing before you here, we did crusade in Kano, open air crusade in a forbidden place. Jesus gave us the instruction. Do you know how many months, how many days we prayed? We prayed for six months. Every day for six months. By the time we mounted the crusade, things on the field. Nobody challenged us. Nobody. Not one. Do you know how many Muslims gave their life to Christ? In public view. 
the power of conviction was so tangible. And instead of, of a counterattack from the kingdom of darkness, people were rejoicing that the Lord had visited them. We prayed for six months before we heard that crusade. Miracles could even take place just because you came to the ground. We prayed without ceasing for six months from January to June. And it's what crusade. So when you get ready to move the hand of God, get set to pray without ceasing. Oh, I remember when you did uh, 50 days of prayer, you displaced a spirit and the spirit began to look for me. I was on the field. And when the spirit came into the territory, I felt that, I felt it so strong. Ah. You see, when you begin to labor in prayer, God will activate your spiritual senses so that your perception becomes very, very articulate. First of all, we saw resistance. We, could, we wanted to travel to Ghana for an event, and everything that could go wrong went wrong. And that's the third time things like that are happening. The first time we went to do COVID tests, we got to the reference lab in Abuja. They say, hey, apostle, apostle, ah, your own is free. Your own is free. Your family is free. Okay. When we got to the airport, that result did not come out. We called it. What's happening? They say the person that is supposed to sign it is in a meeting. Meanwhile, the aircraft needs to fly. So I said, all right, let me just visit the office of the airline and shift the flight. We'll miss a few days, but we'll still be there. The moment I enter, they say, hey, man of God. I said, okay, God has come here. The manager delayed that flight until the COVID came out. The demon thought that the flight had gone. Delayed it for one hour. When you pray here, pray. Ooh, when I go to the field to minister, the demons that are displaced, they try to resist me there. So if you don't have your own capacity, Satan will hinder you. The key, prayer is a sacrifice when you learn how to what? Pray without. So the moment you did that 50 hours, heaven had sponsored a promotion for us. But if you know anything about promotions or spiritual breakthroughs, the moment a spiritual breakthrough comes to you and your promotion is announced, have you heard that scripture? It was Paul that said that a great door and an effectual is open unto us, but there are many adversaries. Suddenly, adversaries from the kingdom of darkness will contend to ensure that you are not ushered into that door. That is open. And that's why if God has not dealt with you and you don't understand how to operate in the fruit of the Spirit, because Satan will come and try to occasion an agitation. And if by any means you move in the flesh, your response in the agitation is flesh word. Just like Satan tried Jesus, he came first with the lust of the flesh. You are the son of God. You are hungry. There's a legitimate need here. You can turn these stones to bread. You see, a door had opened in the spirit, and suddenly Satan now comes with his testing equipment to see whether you have the depth in Christ to resist temptations that will come in the flesh. All right? And that is the only qualification for you to enter into what has been opened. Suddenly you will see situations that will want to make you hate. Situations that will want to make you retaliate with evil. But if you know the way of warfare, that's when to be calm. <laughs> that's when to allow the Spirit of God dwell richly in you and to fully take charge of your vessel. Hallelujah. Because the prince of this world will come. The moment something opens up in the spirit, the prince of this world will come to test you whether you have the qualification to enter. And I know that cycle a, a lot. Now, how many of you, are you with me? Has it ever happened to you before? Um, 
there was a prayer meeting you didn't want to come. And then you now force yourself. And in that prayer meeting, God moved so much. Has it happened to you before? Something opened in the spirit for you. Your name was mentioned in heaven. The reason for the struggle was that these entities, these adversaries have come to resist you to give you many wonderful options of what to do other than what God wants. And by the mercy of God, even though you did not know the details of what was going on, you, you just, you drag yourself. It, it wasn't convenient. You didn't even feel like it. And then the moment you came to the appointed place, something broke loose. Whenever you notice that there seems to be a resistance, a, something is pressuring you to, to operate in the flesh, to respond in the flesh, know that something has opened overhead. Because the prince of this world will come, but he must find nothing in you. Oh, that's how I labored. Labored in prayer, labored in prayer, labored. And God gave me a big promise. Two days after the big promise, there's still my car in Lagos. But in, in the dream I had, three days before the theft, I saw that my car was stolen. And Pastor Adeboye came to me and said, don't look for it. Don't look for it. He told me twice. Then I woke up. I told my wife that they stole our car. And Pastor came and said, don't look for it. So when I woke up the next the day they stole the car, I checked where I parked it. It was not there. So I went to work. When I came back, they had had a meet at home. The strategies to use to recover the vehicle. Uh, what I told my wife, this was what I got, the intelligence I got in the dream. And it's a strange kind of dream. It's not the normal type of dreams I have. So I now called the family together, the people that were with me in Lagos, that this is the last time we will talk about this car. The car has gone. Three days later, I was in the bathroom when the Lord spoke to me. He came there. He said, because you did not, in the face of the pressure, you did not feel, feel the need to go into searching for that vehicle. You will have no need for vehicles. So when I see people riding that vehicle now, when I see how that vehicle looks now, I say, hey! <laughs> Something had opened in the realm. And Satan wanted me to latch out in the flesh completely. A little caution came from the Holy Ghost. I yielded. It's okay. That means you treasure my relationship with you and my instructions to you much more than material stuff. You will not have need for vehicle again. There is something better than that material thing you are looking for. I pray God will open your understanding to know when things open in the spirit. The fact that the thing opened in the spirit is not a guarantee that you will enter. A great door and an effectual is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. Some of the ladies in my house, I called one. I say, today, I say, the door of your marriage has opened. However, it is going to be open for a short time. I know when things open. And the moment it opens, even if you, don't, you can't sense it in the spirit, the opposition you will feel in the natural, just know that there's something happening. And be determined not to operate in the flesh. May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. So the first kind of sacrifice, prayer sacrifice that we have is praying without ceasing. Seven days of prayer, three days of prayer, 21 days of night vigil, 50 days in the night without ceasing. You will see the hand of God move. Meanwhile, there are dimensions of God you will never know if you don't pray for long. Hallelujah. Number two. 
sometimes you will need to add a spice to your prayer to make it more effective. So you need to add the spice of fasting. If you want a change, a lasting one, you are advised to fast for long. That's why we are training you with 40. This is training. If you get used to it, then you can journey with God. Sometimes he will come and touch you. And after touching you, you don't feel like eating for 200 days. Your stomach can just open briefly by 5 o'clock and then you eat. And then you are okay. And then the next day your stomach doesn't open at all. Then the other day it opens by 3 o'clock you eat. The other day it opens by 4 o'clock you eat. And it continues for 200 days because it just touched you. So you have to mix prayer with the spice of fasting. <laughs> I am old, I pray that the Lord will give you understanding. It seems what I'm saying are fearful things because the way I'm seeing you. That's why we preach holiness. Because God wants to saturate you. He will put his hand on your vessel. And he will quicken, he will make your sleep short but powerful so that you can have time to wake up in the night. When you have woken up, you, that's what we call the power nap of the Holy Ghost. He, make, he give it his beloved sleep. Power nap. Two hours of sleep is as if you slept for 12 hours. Your blood pressure has gone down. Ah. <laughs> Witches will avoid your house. That prayer you... Where is Shala? The prayer you pray that the witch comes in the morning, you didn't pray enough. When you release what I'm talking about, there will be no visitation forever. This one, you pray in the morning, you say, a witch is coming to check. How are you? How are you? How? You have not... You have done nothing. <laughs> you are confused. In fact, there was no prayer point. Oh. Oh. So I know when God comes to me and God takes away my appetite for food, he takes it away himself. And he can take it away for four months. I'm not a religious man. No. It's not as if I like fasting like that because you, you think I just like to suffer. I like hard things. No. I know when the Lord comes and takes away my appetite for food. I can take it for four months. And I'm with him. Sometimes he takes it for one year. And then if you see me after four months, the anointing has doubled. My elder brother called me and said, see, the way you are growing is not normal. This is not good. It's not <laughs> see, let's see. Be doing this. <laughs> Be doing this thing. Small, small. <laughs> he said, he opened his eyes when he saw me preaching somewhere and God was moving. He said, ah, this is my brother. Oh. He, be, he was afraid for me. It, it's not my doing. God took away the ability, the eating. He took it so that I can add the spice of fasting to my prayer. The moment the thing he wants to achieve is accomplished, he will return it back. And the law for Pandedian will just be restored. You know? <laughs> ah! I am a living sacrifice. You want to move his hand? A time will come for three months, four months, he's asking you to give. Small money comes to your hand. You say, give half. For the next eight months, live on half. And you are giving. He doesn't tell you what is happening. Say, live on half. Give me half, you take half. And it flows like that. For six months. For seven months. And he will make sure that the half that you have is more than enough to take care of you. Sometimes he brings another formula. He says, you take 30, give me 70. Then that 30 will become so big, bigger than the, what you used to have before. These are accumulations. These are, this is the life of a priest in prayer. Oh my. This night, this night, I will ask the Lord this night that he might release a measure of this spirit that comes to take some appetites away. 
experience, when you experience it, that's when you will, you will stand before someone that is demonized, that speaks for Satan. You stand before him like this, and you point him, and the demons in him will begin to go. You don't even need to say anything. Oh! That's when you cannot know what spiritual warfare is. You can't preach spiritual warfare to babies. In your watchings in the night, your sleep will go for the next 60 days. When you, no clock, when it's 2 o'clock, the thing will just sleep, will just do, ooh, and you're awake. That's the way of the priests. The currency here is called sacrifice. None of us is strong in ourselves. But the power of Christ will demand a sacrifice from you. That sometimes there is an oil oh yeah, that comes upon me. Even the appetite to meet with your wife goes for a season. Because it's the language of sacrifice that that realm can understand. And when I walk like that for four months, and I see a man that is mad on the streets. I know that if I stretch my hands on him, he'll be healed. <laughs> I went to Gogolada. I told them, tomorrow is a healing night. Come with the dead. If you have a madman in your city, chain him. Just go and chain and bring him for the meeting. And somebody believed me. And the madman of Gwagwalada, they arrested him and brought him. When I began to minister, that guy was the first person to be healed. His brain came back to him. Oh, you are talking about raw miracles, the type that you cannot explain. You must be a living sacrifice. Hey, people using charm in the office, if you do this thing that I'm telling you, they will run away from you. The things that you are afraid of today, by the time we are done in this year, you will find out that those things have, will be afraid of. Since I was born, this is my eye. I've never closed it before. But I've, I've not used glasses. Dust, everything enters. But it has not affected the vision. <laughs> there are some things you do, things can't die around. No. They will live by the power of the altar that drives your life. My desire was to be a powerful Christian. Such a person that when he comes into the neighborhood, Satan will lose his voice. I've always had that dream. How did God do it? He can come around your space. He passes, his glory just passes by your face. And appetite goes. It just goes. There's nothing you do that will bring it back. Not. Oh, a time comes. Every day, somebody sends you a million. And he, he, will, he will say, every million that enters, send it here. So what you are doing is just, you are just challenging me. And you say you bought, you bought ram and, and pigeon with rabbit, grass cutter. You killed it. And you will do something. And it will have so much power to affect such a person. I have gained mileage. For many years. Oh, there were opportunities to touch women, to do all of that. Many women have come to me, offered themselves to me. You, the reason why I didn't accept is because I, it would destroy my altar. The flesh wanted it to. But I knew it was not, it's a luxury I couldn't contemplate. I had done damage to the devil. And the day he sees that I touch his product, he will appear to me. <laughs> he will appear. He will say, hey! <laughs> 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 
can you go far with God and get lost so that you, you know you have, you have, you have, your life has been a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You can't even bring yourself to accepting sin. When I was still working in the oil industry, they were looking for a weakness in my life so that they could attack me because I stopped millions of money. They were looking for a weakness. They tried me with women. Oh, man. They tried. I was there for seven years, so one spot in one place. Nobody could go there. Nobody could walk there. So, no more posting for me. My assignment is that terrible place. They posted somebody there. The person came to the office and said, it's not working again. They should take their, their job. And he wants to be alive. So, they now asked, who is the pastor here? They said, it's on leave. Ask him to come back. That's how I went to that place. When I got to that place, the instruction was, don't eat in the daytime. The ability to eat, he left. Meanwhile, he does Lagos now. You need to see the canteens. The rice is red. <laughs> if I give God my lifetime, <laughs> he will take care of me. Red rice. He will never, never let me down. <laughs> Strange things. And it came to pass. They couldn't find any weakness. They now sent one of their guys to me and said, you know, it's, it's, everybody knows that all of us were in something, including you. All of us are in something. He said, but the one you are in is what we don't know. I said, it's true, I'm in something. I said, hey, you see, we're saying... So which type? I say it's the strongest type. They say, mm. my attacks ended. That <laughs> you are insulting. <laughs> no weakness. I dwelt with them for seven years. I've worked in places where in the night by 3 a.m. they will bring something to that place and bury it. And the security man will call me and say, Oga, they don't bring something called burial. I say, okay. Yes, I've been there. Nothing happened. You, you have a choice. I walked where the war was. And I came out unspotted. Many died, many died. You just come to work on Monday and say, oh, oh this man... You don't die. Oh. That's all. Oh. That's, that's the last. Nobody will talk about him again. Can we pray? Can we pray? You have made the devil strong. Wake up. Wake up and say, Oh, for the next 21 nights, I want to meet with the witches that have been causing problems. They've been making noise. Let's meet now. And prayers were made without cease. Are you ready to be a sacrifice? A living sacrifice? Then God will use you. <laughs> if I give God my lifetime, He will take care of me. He will never let me down. I will give God my life. If I give God my lifetime, if I give God my lifetime, He will take care of me. He will take care. Iso salimo compre mama la tale.
give him my lifetime. My lifetime. no limitation in the extent of that which he intends to do. You become his living sacrifice. He can pass through your bedroom and take sleep from you for 21 days. He can pass around your life and take the appetite for food from you. Can you say, Lord, you have the right. You have the right. You have the right with me. You have the right with me. You have the right with me. Have the right. You can step into my room. Take away any appetite. So that I can offer such sacrifice that will give you an excuse to bring about intervention. Can you talk to him right now? You have the right of way. You can come into my space. You can come into my space. I am your vessel. I am your vessel. I am your vessel, Lord. I am your vessel, Lord. Simon Moredisco Falama Matalaya. Proscabo Messia Bella. Antomena. Curia Pahasketo Bronde. Yamas Cupre Valatos Kito Boko Bocotolia. Yata babarata boskamena, raito keboskebolu, priska mamaya compela masi, abresco folombera kabatala, ima mose kataya, rakabata bababoko temenala, sei kopeta bobo sale, e braske to kobelante, yakabanta baboko sa malatalia, e bravis, e bramalako. Ebras Kemina, Ebras Sunda, Iabokos Ketabanta. My vessel is available. My vessel is available. My vessel is available. Iabobo Senta Leminaya, Abrebos Kabelaito, Igo Bobo Senta Ali, Iaboresiko Mama. If I give God my lifetime, He will take care of me. He will never, never let me die. I will give God. 
God my lifetime. Can you sing it one more time? If I give God. So Dan, I'm, I'm pastor with the mic. Come. Yeah. I want to interview you now. We are going to overrun Satan in this city, in this nation. Ooh. Is it witchcraft? It's not that powerful. It's only laziness that makes the devil popular. So I want to do a 10 minutes interview here. All right? This is my friend. He's a pastor with Living Faith Church. And, uh, but he's my, he's my brother. He has an unusual ability. And his ability is, for how long have you been doing night vigils? I started um, 10th October uh, 2019. 10th of October 2019, the night vigils have not stopped. <laughs> now, see, stay with me. Are you with me? This ability is not human ability. This is the ability of priesthood. And we cannot teach priesthood without making you understand that there is an enablement that we receive to be priests. 10th October 2019. It started. So when you started the night vigil, how long do you normally pray then? And what were the things that happened that adjusted the prayer time until... Uh, the current practice. Um, <clears throat> night vigils, are, I mean, has always been a part of me. If I would say officially, it yeah. was 10th October 2019. Okay. But I think I started 2008. 2008. Yes. But officially. Officially. The commitment with heaven. 10th October 2019. But what I noticed was that, you know, 10th October, I just casually decided to give one hour in prayers. And I discovered that um, after some time of one hour, when I go back to bed, I will be attacked. And you, know, you know, the other time I was telling you about understanding your own shape of priesthood one of the indicators that can give you an idea of when you are still supposed to be standing is attacks. 
What that attack suggests is that you are not covered. It means there is an assignment that you are supposed to be doing and you have decided not to do it. So God wants to help you. So he allows the devil to have access. So, so the attack, he prays one hour. God wants you to pray more. You pray one. I say, this is my own that I'm giving. Then he will, something will happen. So I encourage you to continue. Okay. So after one hour, when I go to bed, I used to just sleep, dream, visions, and everything. Everything was full. But um, and now, I now decided to go to. Then it took a while. But after some time, when I go back, I get attacked again. So it, it, it means that he increased from one hour. And then he made it two. Then the attacks, there were no attacks. You see, what was happening to him was that the capacity of his spirit was enlarging. That's why when you start on a spiritual journey, on a spiritual course, don't stop. Keep struggling. A time you will, there are seasons will come where there will be a, 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 a noticeable impartation of grace. And your previous struggles will end. Start with struggles. It will not be convenient when you start. It won't just flow. It's not a lifestyle. But the Holy Ghost will soon come and fill it up. And it will be easy for you to carry on. At that point, when you have entered into that enablement that the Holy Ghost gives, you, you, are, you are now a priest. The Holy Spirit is moving you to do acts of priesthood. You are part of the people he's counting on to open the land for his visitation. Yes? Then I noticed that um, I can comfortable, uh, comfortable play, uh, pray to 4 a.m. after some time. And so I it stayed, increased yes. from one hour, two hours, then to four hours. Then it became comfortable. Very the Holy Spirit had filled up that dimension. So that measure was a spiritual normal for him at a certain time. Should I say something? We are the ones that actually give God limits. Meanwhile, I am aware, I need to balance it, I'm aware that he has the calling of a prophet. Every prophet is fundamentally a watchman and they have more praying ability than the average believer. The prayer grace is upon the prophet much more than the average believer. Do you understand that? All right, so... He, this grace is given unto him consistent with the office he occupies. You need to find your own measure according to your calling that will give God full opportunity to express himself through your vessel as he wishes. I know my measure. I know what makes me have the capacity to do the things God has called me to do. I know the priesthood requirement. And it's different for all of us. Do you understand that? All right. Then also, um, I haven't stayed up until four for a very long time, so to say, and I was very comfortable. Very comfortable yes. with four, four hours. Yes. So when I go back to bed again, I think about four months ago, I get attacked again. You get attacked again. It means that God is saying, there is more. Your priesthood has a stronger mantle than the four hours possibility. So, what is it now? When, when do you sleep now? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. So, we'll rest our case there. <laughs> now, you may not know, you might see people. You may not know what they mean to God. When someone walks in, the first thing you look at is his car. See? And then you... You estimate him based on natural parameters. There are some people that their labors is the reason for which some cities have not fallen into darkness. It is when we stand before God that you will not know the two sides of men. Now he sleeps 7 a.m. and he does it as a routine. It's not as if church says, okay, let's do night vigil. No, he has found a life in priesthood. The idea of priesthood is that you eventually become a living sacrifice. A life will be given to you that you never had the natural ability to, to furnish. 
you'll be given a life. You have the life, that life. When your altar burns like that, sin cannot be your problem. When your altar burns like that, because of the saturation of God's grace on your life, someone wants you to cut corners for money. No, it's, the person is too small. Do you understand that? You become bigger than some things. Because a call to priesthood is a call to present your vessel for saturation. When your vessel is saturated, God thinks is taught through your thoughts. God performs his will. Your will is surrendered to his will. Your emotions are stabilized to contain his own emotions about the matter. That's where we are going. Where every one of us will be indeed a living sacrifice. Can you salute my friend?